So let me say, it is my high honor and distinct privilege to introduce to you the president-elect of the United States of America, Donald Trump. Donald Trump, 74 years old, 45th president of the U.S. When you, when you roll up at a McDonald's, what does is, what is Donald Trump order? Uh, fish and light sometimes, right? <laughs> uh, the, uh, the Big Macs are great, the quarter pounder with cheese. I mean, I, it's great Do stuff. People- like most Americans, he likes fast food. He calls golfing his primary form of exercise, and he runs the famous TV show, The Apprentice. The Apprentice was an instant success, averaging about 21 million viewers on its first season in January 2004. Donald Trump was suddenly the hottest name on television. His tagline, You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. Became the most awaited TV moments of the week. He owns multi-billion businesses in real estate, hotels, and casinos. According to Forbes magazine, he's the first billionaire president in the history of the U.S., and his personal net worth is estimated at $2.1 billion. Being in the business world in his whole life, he decided to take on an adventure. Ladies and gentlemen, I am officially running for president of the United States. He brings his TV star charisma onto the campaign rally. What you would say to President Obama? You're fired. You cannot deny his fun to watch. Trump or Hillary? It's sometimes heartwarming. You want to go back to them, or do you want to stay with Donald Trump? Trump. Aren't you starting to like him? When you take the job of a country's president, you can't just entertain. Your choices impact billions. What you're listening to is a recording that was made inside the Border Patrol facility in 2018. In the clip, the little girl was separated from her parents. This little girl's name is Allison Jamina Valencia Madrid. She's six years old and just finished kindergarten in El Salvador. Her mother was trying to flee from gang violence. In April 2018, the Trump administration and Attorney General Jeff Sessions instituted a zero-tolerance policy on undocumented immigration. Under the zero-tolerance policy, if you cross the border without document, you will be immediately prosecuted, even and often before the asylum claims can be processed. Since the zero-tolerance policy, over 2,300 children have been separated from their families. We don't understand the trauma. I work with children in trauma. I have a nonprofit in the Mission District. The trauma takes years, years to heal. I don't think we should obey a law that goes against what God intends. He would take a baby, a child, from his or her mom. President Trump, if you're truly ashamed of what's happening at the border, get your team together and undo this shameful policy immediately, which you can do with a flick of the pen. Trump claims that President Obama separated children. He's the one that brought them together. President Obama separated children. They had child separation. I was the one that changed it. Okay. A quick fact check shows that this is false and requires context. Under Obama, children were separated from parents only when authorities had concerns for their well-being or could not confirm that the adult was in fact their legal guardian, but not as a blanket policy as what Trump does. Trump's immigration policy not only ruthlessly separated children at the borders, he doesn't welcome engineers, executives, IT experts, doctors, nurses, and other workers. On June 22, 2020, Mr. Trump blocked visas for a wide variety of jobs, including those for computer programmers and other skilled workers who enter the country under the H-1B visa, as well as those for seasonal workers in the hospitality industry and students on work-study summer programs. Ironically, records show that a number of Trump's golf clubs and resorts rely heavily on H-2B visas to hire seasonal cooks and waiters.
This is a list of COVID-19 achievements released by the 2020 Trump campaign. February 4th, President Trump vows to take all necessary steps to protect America from the virus. February 7th, hold a phone call to discuss COVID-19 response. February 24th, send a letter to Congress. February 26th, discuss coronavirus containment efforts. One of the Twitter users commented questioning, what is actually implemented contact tracing and nationwide testing? South Korea and the US confirmed their first coronavirus case on the same day. From January 20th to March 17th, US only tested 25,000 people. And South Korea? 274,000, 10 times more than the US. So what is President Trump doing at the time? Trump has been downplaying the pandemic since January 20th, when the first reported case found in the U.S. Been briefed by the CDC. Have, are the words about a pandemic at this point? No, we're not at all, and uh, we're we have it totally under control. It's one person coming in from China, and we have it under control. It's uh, going to be just fine. The virus. They're working hard. Looks like by April. You know, in theory, when it gets a little warmer. It, miraculously goes away. I hope that's true. Yeah. It's going to disappear. One day it's like a miracle. It will disappear. Two days after, on February 29th, he said a vaccine will be available very quickly and very rapidly and praised his administration's actions as the most aggressive taken by any country. But instead of going down close to zero, the United States has nearly 400,000 cases less than two months out from Trump uttering those words. Nurses live in desperation. Let me protect myself. Let me feel safe. I have family that I have to come home to. America is not prepared and nurses are not being protected. This is a memo sent to President Trump in late January by his economic advisor Peter Navarro. February 10th, a few days after the memo, President Trump had a rally. The virus. They're working hard. Looks like by April, you know, in theory, when it gets a little warmer, it miraculously goes away. Trump later claimed that even if he had read the memo, it wouldn't have made any difference because I basically did what the memo said, but he didn't. Navarro's memo recommended significant immediate federal investment in personal protection equipment for healthcare workers, but federal agencies largely held off on such expenditures until mid-March, when the crisis was already spinning out of control. Today, the number of total confirmed cases is... Twenty twenty, our attention has been drawn by the pandemic. Those constantly changing numbers have been affecting our nerves. Perhaps many people don't know. At the same time, other places on Earth are undergoing quiet changes. There was never a hotter January than twenty twenty. Antarctic Island has a record temperature of almost twenty one degrees Celsius. Chinstrap penguin chicks in Antarctica are freezing to death because of rain. With ice melting, polar bears couldn't find food, dead with only bones and skins left. Hundreds of thousands of whorls hollowed along the beach. In January, scientists from Ohio State University discovered evidence of the existence of ancient viruses in the ice core samples of the Tibetan Plateau. Among them are 28 novel viruses. Global warming is causing glaciers around the world to shrink. They may release microbes and viruses that have been frozen for hundreds of thousands of years. The global temperature would likely increase by 2 to 4 degrees in 2100. Irreversible changes may happen. Rains turns into hurricanes. Extreme heat waves will routinely visit large parts of the globe. Parts of Manhattan and Miami will be underwater. Fortunately, scientists and many governments have already taken action. UK's carbon emission has been reduced to pre-industrial revolution level. The smartest man on Earth is trying to move men to Mars building electric cars and solar batteries. And here's what President Trump says about climate change. Warming and that, and a lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. I mean, it's a money-making industry, okay? It's a hoax. 
the United States will withdraw from the Iran nuclear deal. The deal that Trump pulled out of was the world's attempt to prevent war and try to stop Iran from pursuing the nuclear weapon without forcing it to. What do you have as a better option? I don't see it. What is the what if scenario? Or your plan B? I don't have any plan B for nuclear against, uh, against Iran. How does this make America safer? Thank you very much. This will make America much safer.